While NASA struggles with delays and SpaceX waits for regulatory approval, China just revealed something that changes everything. They're not just planning to reach the moon by 2030. They've already tested their rocket, unveiled their lunar suits, and locked in their landing site near Shackleton Crater. Their Long March 10 boasts a 97% success rate, and two missions are already scheduled for 20, 26, and 2027. So, what's their secret that NASA and SpaceX are missing? And why does this timeline suddenly make America's 2026 Artemis mission look uncertain? China's Chang'e 7 mission isn't just another robotic probe. It's a full-scale dress rehearsal for human boots on lunar soil. Scheduled for August 2026, this 8,200-kilogram spacecraft will do something no other nation has attempted. Land near Shackleton Crater at 88. 0.88 degrees south latitude, deploy a hopping robot into permanently shadowed craters, and hunt for water ice that could fuel future missions. But here's what makes this different from anything NASA has done. They're bringing international partners along, including a surprising collaboration with American scientists. How did China convince U.S. researchers to join their mission while NASA and SpaceX work separately? The spacecraft carries more than a dozen instruments spread across an orbiter, lander, rover, and that specialized hopper. Engineers will spend two months studying lighting patterns before touchdown because, at the lunar south pole, the difference between sunlight and shadow can mean mission success or catastrophic failure. The hopper's job sounds simple. Jump into craters that haven't seen sunlight in billions of years and analyze the soil. Yet this single capability could answer the question that's worth trillions. Is there enough water ice to sustain a permanent human presence? What's fascinating is the timeline. While this robotic mission maps the terrain in 2026, China's next steps are already locked in with military precision. They've publicly committed to landing astronauts by 2030. And unlike previous space race promises, they're backing it up with hardware you can see. The Long March 10 rocket completed ground testing in August 2024. The Mengzhou crew capsule begins uncrewed flights next year. The Lan Yu lunar lander ran prototype tests throughout 2024 and will conduct full robotic trials in 2027 and 2028. Does this sound like a country that's guessing or one that's already solved the equation? Let's break down their approach because it reveals something critical about how they think. China needs two Long March 10 rockets for each moon landing. One carries the astronauts in Mengzhou the other carries the 26-ton Lan Yu lander. Both launch separately, rendezvous in lunar orbit, and only then do two astronauts transfer to the lander for descent. It's more complex than Apollo's single Saturn V launch, but it solves a problem that's haunted NASA for years. You don't need to build a rocket as powerful as the space launch system if you're willing to master orbital rendezvous. With a 97% success rate across their Long March family, they've proven they can execute precision operations. So why is NASA betting everything on a single massive rocket that's already years behind schedule? The spacesuits China unveiled in 2024 tell another part of the story. Red and white, built to handle temperature swings of 250 degrees Celsius, equipped with cameras for both close-up work and panoramic views, and featuring a glare-reducing visor that Apollo astronauts would have envied. These aren't concept drawings. These are manufactured suits that astronauts are already training in. Even Elon Musk noticed, sharing the reveal video and contrasting China's visible progress with what he called the FAA's Kafka-esque paperwork, slowing down American space efforts. When was the last time you saw NASA's Artemis spacesuits in action, not just in press releases? But the real advantage might be something less tangible than rockets and suits. 
China's space program operates under stable multi-year planning with consistent funding and minimal political interference. They announced the Chang'e program in 2004 with three goals, orbit the moon, land on it, return samples. Between 2007 and 2020, they achieved all three through five missions. Chang'e 3 landed successfully. Chang'e 4 became the first mission ever to touch down on the lunar far side. Chang'e 5 brought samples home, each mission built directly on lessons from the previous one. There were no presidential transitions cancelling programs, no congressional battles over budgets, no switching between the moon, Mars, and asteroids every election cycle. What happens when a space program gets to focus on one goal for 26 consecutive years? The South Pole location isn't random either. Those permanently shadowed craters could hold billions of tons of water ice, preserved since the solar system's formation. Water means drinking water, breathable oxygen, and hydrogen fuel for rockets, all produced on-site instead of launched from Earth at $10,000 per kilogram. China's already thinking past the landing. Their International Lunar Research Station, originally planned with Russia for 2030 to 2035, aims to establish a permanent research base. Russia's invasion of Ukraine complicated that partnership, but China hasn't slowed down. They're proceeding with or without Moscow, and they've opened invitations to other nations. The European Space Agency is watching closely. So are Japan, South Korea, and the UAE. If China builds the first functioning lunar base, who do you think will be sending astronauts there? Meanwhile, NASA's Artemis II, which would merely fly astronauts around the moon without landing, has been delayed repeatedly. Originally scheduled for 2024, it's now targeting 2026 at the earliest. Artemis III, the actual landing mission, keeps slipping further into the future, currently penciled in for 2027, but few experts believe that date. The space launch system costs roughly $4.1 billion per launch, more than China's entire annual space budget of $19 billion. SpaceX's Starship offers a potential alternative, but it still needs to prove orbital refueling, demonstrate landing reliability, and navigate the regulatory maze Musk complains about. How did the nation that put 12 people on the moon between 1969 and 1972 end up racing to beat a deadline set by a country that didn't even have a space program back then? China's spending $19 billion annually compared to America's $60 billion, yet they're hitting milestones faster and more predictably. The difference isn't just money, it's focus, consistency, and freedom from political cycles. When Chinese engineers designed the Long March 10, they deliberately used the same diameter and engines as the proven Long March 5, accelerating development by building on existing success rather than reinventing everything. When they planned Mengzhou, they made it modular, one version for Earth orbit missions to Tiangong, another for deep space lunar flights. Smart engineering choices that prioritize results over prestige. The Chang'e 7 hopper represents another edge, willingness to try unconventional solutions. No other space agency has seriously developed a hopping robot for lunar exploration. But those permanently shadowed craters are treacherous, too risky for rovers, yet too valuable to ignore. So China engineered a small vehicle that can leap into darkness, grab samples with the lunar soil water molecule analyzer, and hop back out. If it works, they'll map water ice deposits while NASA's still debating which instruments to send. What other innovations are they developing that we won't know about until the hardware is already on the moon? This is in 1969 Redux. The first space race was about planting flags and winning Cold War bragging rights. This race is about establishing infrastructure, extracting resources, and controlling the stepping stone to Mars and the asteroid belt. China's treating it like a long-term infrastructure project, patient, methodical, building capability after capability. America's treating it like a sprint, 
throwing money at problems and hoping to recover past glory. Which approach wins when the finish line is 50 years away, not five? Here's the reality. China's moon program works because they planned it in 2004 and executed every step without stopping. Chang'e 7 launches in 2026, astronauts land by 2030, and the International Lunar Research Station follows. Not because they spend more, they spend $19 billion versus America's $60 billion, but because they focus on results over politics. While NASA delays Artemis and SpaceX navigates regulations, China's building the infrastructure that will control lunar resources worth trillions. The next five years will decide who leads space exploration for the next 50. China's Pokazal the hardware hit the deadlines and invited the world to join them. The question isn't if they'll reach the moon, it's what happens when they get there first. What's your take? Does China's approach prove that consistent planning beats bigger budgets? Let me know in the comments below. If this video showed you what's really happening in the new space race, hit that like button right now. Subscribe to Atlas Space and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next deep dive into the missions reshaping humanity's future. Share this with anyone who needs to understand where space exploration is actually headed. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Last week's brutal explosion at Massey's test site completely destroyed Booster 18 during routine pressure testing. The liquid oxygen tank erupted, strakes were torn off, and COPV vessels burst through the steel walls. SpaceX had to carefully dismantle what remained of their first version 3 booster. But here's what nobody expected. They've already begun assembling Booster 19, targeting December for completion. Flight 12 still on track for the first quarter of 2026. How does a major setback actually accelerate their timeline? What secrets did this failure reveal? The photos that came out the day after tell a story SpaceX never planned to share. RGV aerial photography captured something incredible, one entire strake completely missing. Circular cuts in the tank wall where co-PVs had exploded, and half of a pressure vessel sitting in the stairway of the cryo stand. Seven COPVs packed under each strake, and at least three had burst with enough force to tear through reinforced steel. What caused seven pressure vessels designed to withstand extreme forces to fail simultaneously? The answer points to a cascade effect. When one weaker COPV overpressurized during gas system testing, it triggered a chain reaction through the remaining vessels. This explains why no intact pressure vessels were found in the debris field. The irony? SpaceX had